no, regarding all vitamins. So let's, now let us move towards the thiamine. So the thiamine is actually B1 vitamin B1, so it's active form. You can say this is not an active form. The TPP is an active form, which is, stands for thiamine pyrophosphate. So which is actually a coenzyme of thiamine. So this TPP, you can, or the coenzyme, is used in the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate, of pyruvate by pyruvate dehydrogenase, decarboxylase. Sorry. So the pyruvate decarboxylase actually uh, is an enzyme which uses a coenzyme, uh, which is that TPP, which actually helps in the oxidative decarboxylation. So oxidative decarboxylation is a reaction. Um, uh, uh, Oxidative decarboxylase is a reaction, and pyruvate decarboxylase is a coenzyme, which is actually uh, which is an enzyme, and in which the coenzyme is TPP, or you can say uh, the thiamine pyrophosphate. So the other enzymes which are also require this coenzyme, uh, coenzyme are pyruvate dehydrogenase. These are really important. You have to remember them: the uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase and pyruvate decarboxylase. All right. So in the case of deficiency of vitamin. B1 or you can say thiamine we have we are going to have a problem that is named as Betty Betty or you can say WK syndrome or full form is Wernicke Korskov syndrome I'm sorry about my pronunciation but it's Wernicke Korskov syndrome Berry Berry and Wernicke Korskov syndrome so in Berry Berry we have got two types that is the dry Berry Berry and the wet Berry Berry so you have to remember it like this dry berry berry and the uh, wet berry berry so the, in the dry berry berry these are the, this is the problem of the deficiency of uh, b1 thiamine so in the dry berry berry like berry berry is defined divided into two which is the dry berry berry and the wet berry berry so remember it like wet your blood is wet right so this wet berry berry is going to affect your circulatory system and heart because you have got blood in your body so it's hard which is filled with fluid so you can say wet it's wet right so wet berry berry affects your heart and right you got it right circulatory system and your dry affects your nervous system just remember it till that you have to look over other details in the uh, in your whatever books or whatever resources you're in this is enough for the uh, regarding this lecture and in the WK or Warskoff uh, uh, syndrome you have to remember this is a neurological disorder which actually affects your hypothalamus and these uh, you know uh, the other parts of your brain and it's called it, it also causes uh, a memory loss and other problems in your uh, hypothalamus all right now let's move towards the b2 which is riboflavin so in order to remember riboflavin one thing have to be clear that riboflavin or b2 is actually giving two coenzymes that is fad and fam fmn you have heard of them a lot of time a lot of time so FAD stands for the flavin adenine dinucleotide and FMN stands for the flavin mononucleotide so these are two coenzymes remember this one so you you just define it this way riboflavin forms two biological active coenzymes that is FMN and FAD you have to just remember them riboflavin always remember FAD and FMN those two that is flavin mononucleotide and flavin adenine dinucleotide all right, this is the main characteristics of the riboflavin, which actually help in the redox reaction, or you can say it actually helps in the FMNFA help in the redox reaction and take part in the synthesis of ATP and all that issue because it is because they are reduced forms are F, uh, and their reduced form are you know that FMNH2 and FADH2 as they have again the hydrogen in their. Uh, in their uh, in their forms right so one thing other thing that, that I have to discuss is the uh, we have in the deficiency uh, if you go through the books and websites you don't find that in the deficiency uh, we have got anything but there are different there are several things that are when the riboflavin is deficient several symptoms are going to show up that is the angular stomatitis uh, 
And that means that uh, on the sides or on the corners of your mouth, you're going to get a little bit, your corners of your mouth might get a little uh, inflamed and widened. So that's why it's called angular on the angle side, osteomatitis. Uh, and dermatitis, you get inflammation of your skin and all the problems of your skin because of the deficiency of the riboflavin. Now let's move towards, towards the another enzyme that is the niacin. Similar to the riboflavin, you have remembered FAD and FMN. In the niacin, you have to remember FAD, uh, oh, sorry, NAD and NADP. Those both are really important regarding the niacin because these are the actually biological active, or you can say, define it this way, all right? Define it this way. Niacin produces two biological active forms of coenzyme. These are both coenzyme. These were both also coenzyme. Define it this way. Niacin produces two biological active forms of coenzyme, that is nicotinamide dinucleotide and nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Got it? That's it. These are two major coenzymes produced by the, uh, are actually a biological active form of the niacin. And now let's discuss more about the niacin in just a bit. So one thing you have to remember, uh, they mostly ask in MCQs, BCQs, and a lot of things, a lot of the time a uh, teacher asks you in your viva. So you have to remember that tryptophan, when there's a 60 milligram of tryptophan, it actually gives off one milligram of niacin. So if you convert tryptophan 60 milligram, you are going to get one milligram of niacin. That is correct. And another thing you have to remember regarding the niacin that it actually inhibit the lipolysis. So what does that mean? So that means it strongly inhibits the lipoly lipolysis in adipose tissues because they are uh, the primary producers of circulating free fatty acids. So these are the primary producers of the free circulating, uh, I'm sorry, the circulating free fatty acids. So this point is also clear. Another thing we have to remember is actually it is used in the treatment of the hyperlipidemias. This thing have to be remembered. Four things regarding niacin, tryptophan, when 60 milligram of tryptophan can be to niacin, one milligram we are getting. It then have the lipolysis treatment of lipopenemia. And one thing more regarding is clinicals. So regarding the clinicals, we have to remember our symptoms or you can clinical notes, you have to remember the word three Ds. They mostly ask about three Ds. Which vitamin is also called three D or which, uh, uh, in which uh, vitamin deficiency you are going to get a symptom of three Ds. So the symptom, in this case, we have got, uh, because in the, uh, what happens, look, let me define again. In the case of deficiency of niacin, we're going to get a disease, or you can see we're going to get a clinical condition that is polygra. So what happens in polygra, we're going to get 3Ds, which is a symptom. So 3Ds, and what happens in 3Ds? We got dermatitis, inflammation of skin, we get diarrhea, and we get dementia. All right? Finally, death, that's another point. So in polygra deficiency, we have got 3Ds, that is dermatitis, diarrhea, and dementia. That is all the story about the niacin. Now let's move towards the pantothenic acid.